It's May, and this is the Library Road Show. On the show today, science fiction, the history of flight, and summer reading. the May edition of the Library Roadshow. I'm Mary Stein and this is a production of your East Baton Rouge Parish Library System. First, let me thank the thousands of readers and program attendees who participated in our One Book, One Community series featuring hidden figures this spring. I was so impressed by the sense of engagement from young and old at our many events, whether it was a discussion, a film screening, a hands-on program, or a speaker's presentation. I feel we truly achieved that spirit of community. A few programs remain during May. You can find them through the newsletter or on the readonebook.org website. But if you can't let space go yet, I'm happy to announce that this year's Maker Fair will have a space theme. Put Saturday, October 6th on your calendar now. And if you've got a creative side, watch out for the Call for Makers this coming June. For more immediate programs to sort through, consider all the wonderful springtime programs for gardeners. The Farmer's Market is back every Tuesday from 8 till noon at the Main Library at Goodwood, and the Master Gardeners will be at Central Branch, Jones Creek, and Pride Cheneyville branches this month to share gardening tips and tricks. Butterfly gardens, gardening in the shade, even water gardens are just a few of the topics they'll cover. We'll step outside of the main library at Goodwood to take part in the dedication and grand opening of the Independence Botanical Gardens on Saturday, May 12th. These newly renovated and replanted gardens will serve as the site for the Plain Air event for area artists on Saturday, May 26th. Another open house event this May takes place on May 12th as we celebrate 25 years of service at the Blue Bonnet Regional Branch. Check out the Source newsletter for details. Free access to books, audio, and library resources are just a few of the benefits available to you when you get a library card. Need free access to a computer? You get that. Want free access to premium digital resources like Mango Languages and Lynda.com? You get that. Need to book a meeting space? You get that. Heck, you can even check out a telescope or use a digital printer with your library card. If you live in East Baton Rouge Parish, pick up your free library card from your local branch library today. Premium access to everything the library system has to offer is waiting for you. For every kind of service or resource that the library offers in the real world, we also try to offer a complimentary resource in the digital library. So since Louisiana is known for its cuisine and passion for food derived from many different cultural backgrounds, we search for an online product that made food almost come alive through your screen. And we found it in a new resource called the A to Z World Food. Adam St. Pierre joins us now to explain in the digital download. Do you consider yourself a chef? Or would you like to cook more? Or maybe you just want to read about delicious recipes from around the globe. Then the library has a resource for you in A to Z World Food. A to Z World Food brings together recipes from all over the world directly to you that you can save to your account and check out for later. A to Z World Food also has an ingredient section where you can see how ingredients from around the world taste, how to prepare them, their nutritional facts, and related recipes. Articles about food and food culture from nearly every country in the world, and a reference section that includes glossaries about baking, coffee, wine, and beer. And it's all free with just your library card. To check out A to Z World Food, head over to the digital library page at ebrpl. Thanks, Adam. Since Baton Rougeans really love their food, I think this new database pairs nicely with our robust collection of food resources. Whether you're desperately trying to whip up a dish using what's in your cabinets or researching food for your child's fourth grade geography project, and it's so easy to use. Let's shift gears and check in with Kayla Perkins reporting in from Beyond the Stacks. Our programming aims to bring subjects to life in a way that inspires participants to read. 
This program certainly ticked all of those boxes. Well, it's been a blast, but the One Book One Community Celebration of Hidden Figures is making a landing. We're at the Main Library at Goodwood for the History of Flight program with Jim Slade and Betty Darst as Katherine Wright. Let's check it out. Jim Slade led coverage of space, science, and technology issues for ABC television and radio news from 1988 through 2001 as their space correspondent. Slade's career and lifelong interest in aviation kept him at the forefront of some of the most exciting technological developments of the 20th and 21st centuries. It's that lifetime of firsthand experience Jim shared during his presentation at the Main Library at Goodwood. Ever since the first person looked out of the cave and looked at the stars, he or she wanted to touch them, wanted to fly. Saw a bird, why can't I fly like that? Well. Here we are, right in the middle of it, right in the middle of it, taking it for granted even. Well, I do a lot of narration. I lead you through uh, the list of characters, but the pictures on the screen uh, uh, move along and, and take you from a chronological point to the next chronological point, and we build up the story of aviation in the first hundred years of this uh, uh, country. We go from Kitty Hawk in 1903 mm. to the surface of the moon in 1969. <laughs> Jim shared the stage with dramatist and historian Betty Darst, who adopted the persona of Catherine Wright, the younger sister of Orville and Wilbur Wright. She delivered the quite convincing presentation. Orville, being the hobbyist with his wonderful camera, said to Johnny, now take a photo just as I get off like this. And Johnny, afterwards, they said, did you do it? He said, I don't know. You know, he got so captivated with it. And it wasn't until they got home that they found out that he really did get this photo. The interesting thing is how many of the big events, the milestones, were the product of one or two individuals who inspired others to get them there. The rascals did it. They did it the way when others said it couldn't be done. The first hundred years of flight are full of rascals. Now let's just take a few in chronological order. It was a fairly, at the beginning, a fairly small group of people that actually got us into space. Hmm. And uh, uh, most of us got to know them fairly well. Here's Lincoln Beachy at Niagara's Rainbow Bridge. That's 1911 when that took place. This is the glamorous Harriet Quinby, first American woman pilot licensed in 1911. A journalist, she fell in love with flying when she did a story on it. Uh, subsequently, she flew the English Channel and she appeared in exhibitions. It said that she was one of Amelia Earhart's first uh, inspirations. I asked Jim, what was the most interesting innovation you covered through your work? There were a whole bunch of them. Um, uh, of course, Apollo 11, there was nothing like that. That was the peak of about 10 years of work for each and every one of us. Um, and uh, as a matter of fact, it was such a peak that at the end of it, a lot of us were sick. We, mm. we had uh, physical, not mental, <laughs> a lot of people thought so, but we had physical breakdowns that required uh, doctor's treatment because, I guess, of the emotional intensity of what we were doing, knowing that we'd only get to do this once, and you want to get it right. Returning from the 1901 tests, his glider test at Kitty Hawk, Wilbur declared that man would never fly in a thousand years. Jim's first-hand experiences really helped bring the legacy of flight to life. I wondered, what advice would he give to an aspiring space journalist today? You consider yourself a person who is an interpreter for the public. You're sort of the go-between. You have to be able to speak the engineer's language and, and know what they're saying and what it means in order to make it simple enough for the average person who doesn't follow it day to day to make any sense out of it. Yeah. So it's, it's an important, pivotal position. And if you don't do your homework, you're cheating the person <laughs> on the other end. Wow, those two really make history sound like a lot of fun. To find out what's coming up next at your library, pick up a copy of our monthly newsletter, The Source, or visit us online at www.ebrpl.com. There's something special about hearing from someone with firsthand experience, and Jim has an abundance of that. We were lucky to have him. Mary? Thanks, Kayla. We've had great success with all of our Hidden Figures programs. 
The speakers and presenters have really delivered, and local residents keep popping up to share their own experiences with NASA or the space program. Seeing our young people start to internalize their own inspirations and aspirations sends me over the moon. Stay right there. After the break, Pabby Arnold joins me for a chat right here on the Library Road Show. Hi, everyone. It's Jack Black coming to you from the set of Jumanji. Everybody run! Where my what is so slick? I like can't even with this place. Libraries and librarians transform lives every day through digital literacy, discovery, and lifelong learning. There's no puzzle too tough or challenge too great for your librarian. Find the clues to solve your next quest at the library. As an American, it's hard to hear that we have a serious hunger issue in our country. And as a parent, it's even harder to hear that one in five of our kids struggles with hunger, especially when billions of pounds of good food are wasted every year. Feeding America is a nationwide network of food banks that helps provide billions of meals to families in need right in your community. Visit feedingamerica.org to support Feeding America and your local food bank. Together, we can solve hunger. Together, we're Feeding America. It's hard to believe that May is now upon us, and to many of our library staff, that means it's time to switch gears from a focus on schoolwork and homework to summer reading programs for all. Joining me now is Pabby Arnold, coordinator of children's services for the library system. Okay, Pabby, why do we even have a summer reading program? Because of the slide. So what is the slide? The slide? It's fun, isn't yes. it? No, no, the slide is bad. It's the reading slide. It's just like an athlete with muscles. If you don't exercise those muscles, they're going to go away. So if you don't use it, you, don't you use your lose reading. It. You, yes, we know that it's been proven many times that children who don't read over the summer generally lose some of their reading skills by the time school starts again. And by the flip side, if they do read they over the summer, they can begin with a gain. higher range than what they end it with. Yes, so we're trying to help them with that, and we've come up with all kinds of bribes and things to keep them reading throughout the summer. It's not enough to read, start the summer reading program and finish within the first week or two. We want them reading throughout the summer, so we have some things planned for them. That's right, and actually you have shifted the way we operate the children's summer yes. reading program to maximize that that effect, that to build that habit of reading. Right. Not just read 10 books the first week and be done with it. Right. What we have is now to finish a summer reading, they need to read at least five books and they can get the prizes. And that's not hard. Yes, exactly. But to keep the reading throughout the summer, each week is assigned a special prize. And each branch has one of these prizes. Children who read the first week can bring their log in, show us the book they've read, you know, written down on and there. And there's no test. No, 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 no. We're going to stamp it that it's been read and they'll get a free summer reading bag. Mm -hmm. Then after that, they get their name entered into a drawing for one of these prizes. It could be a cookie bouquet. It could be a... Um, uh, uh, Gift certificate for a restaurant to eat a kid's so meal, local all kinds of things. Have they donated give them, yes, some beautiful, wonderful prizes. things. And we'll have a list of those up on our website very soon. And our friends of the library, our patrons of the public library, have also very generously donated prizes. All, especially all of those book bags that That's we give right. away, because we give away a lot of them. But they can get a, uh, choose a book bag and then they can put their name for these prizes. If you look at our Facebook page, the kids' Facebook page last summer, you see a lot of real big smiles. These I kids did. who picked up those prizes. That's it right. was wonderful. So the summer reading program, and I'm going to put my fake quotes around that, it's not a program where you come and attend. It's basically a, a, the you incentive sign up and pledge to, to read throughout the summer. And to help along with that, too, we have programs nearly every single day of that's the summer. Right. So that's to keep you coming back exactly. and reward you for coming and in the door. And our library system and our patrons are so fabulous. We have a jillion performers coming We really the do. We have lots of them. We have our favorites, old favorites of uh, Daisy the Reading Pig, and we have the Alureds coming. This Harvey, year we also, yes. Harvey Rabbit and his friends. We also have Curtis Pierre coming back, the Love. Samba King. Yeah, some movement. Uh, Johnette Downing, who's a well, big Well, there's a friend. lot of music.
music in the theme because this year. Because it's libraries rock. We have a lot of music in there. And so we have all kinds of things We'll be going making on. lots of noise. So th the neat thing to me is that these programs take place not just at the main library, not just I at the regionals, but everywhere. I very much that all of our branches have the same thing, unless they have a problem with room, like River Center is in a temporary place. Sure, so, so maybe the ballet won't fit there. Exactly, but, but they have a, everything else. But a different program will. And these programs are free. Always and it free. Is national performers, quality performers. We have the Baton Rouge Ballet oh, uh, Junior Company that comes. They're lovely. We have Thai Parish Ballet. We have um, Chris Cangelosi's uh, Dance Project come. Yes. Whenever we have dance programs, it's packed. That's right. We've had 300 at least in the audience here at Maine, but every branch can offer the exactly. children the same experience. Exactly. No matter where, where you live in the parish, you have the chance to see the same things, gain the same prizes for the summer reading, and at the end of summer reading, too, remember that when they finish summer reading, they get to choose a book, and they get and some more coupons, it. and they get a certificate. Now, if they choose to end the summer reading after the first week or two, they cannot enter for drawings for the rest of the right, weekly because things. we need to keep you coming. They, they have That's to show the they've point. read another book throughout the summer. Every That's time right. they should read a book, they'll be entered in that week's drawing. All right, is it just for kids? No. Birth through the day before yes, death. Yes, there's one for you and me. There's right, one there's for teens. There's adult ones. There's a teen one. It's the whole family. Everybody come in and join uh sign up for their uh, age summer reading. And what does it cost? Nothing. So you just need your library That's card. That's right. And actually, we have a lot of people who are from other parishes who like our summer reading program, mm -hmm. and we'll even invite them in. Sure, because there's enough books for everyone. Exactly. Well, you can find out more about the summer reading program in this month's edition of The Source, in print or online. After the break, Jennifer Smith Collada, plus book reviews from one of our younger library patrons. All that and more coming up next on the Library Roadshow. Do you wonder how your family landed here? Do you really know your family roots? Discover more about your family history at the East Baton Rouge Parish Library Genealogy Department. East Baton Rouge Parish Library. Become a member and discover more. Don't let E. coli mosh with your food. An estimated 3,000 Americans die from a foodborne illness each year. You can't see these microbes, but they might be there. So always separate raw meat from vegetables. Keep your family safe at foodsafety.gov. This is the story of a boy who was very sensitive to lights and sounds. So he built secret hiding places where nothing could get in. The boy didn't like looking people in the eye. It made him feel uncomfortable. One day, he found out he had something called autism. His family got him help, and slowly, he learned how to live with it better. Early intervention can make a lifetime of difference. Learn the signs at autismspeaks.org. Welcome back to the May edition of the Library Roadshow. Jennifer Smith Collada is a retired teacher who taught early childhood special education for 25 years. She's also a Baton Rouge native. Jennifer has two daughters, Elizabeth and Sarah Ashley, who are both 16 years old now. Most of Jennifer's writing is based on real-life events involving her unique and fun-loving daughters, including her most recent book, The Girl with the Red Rubber Boots. Jennifer joins me now by phone. Jennifer, how did you get your start as an author? I said shortly after college, I took a course from Institute of Children's Literature, Tried to publish many times, but to no avail. Finally went to a self-publishing website and just did it. What's The Girl with the Red Rubber Boots about? The book is titled The Girl with the Red Rubber Boots. It is fiction based on facts, maybe semi-fiction. The book is about a three-year-old girl who's extremely precocious and stubborn, yet utterly lovable and funny. The girl is gifted with a pair of shiny red rubber boots and she refuses to wear any other shoes for a year. The real reason behind this is because she has issues of sensory defensiveness, ADHD, and major anxiety. And these boots make her feel more secure and grounded. What inspired you to actually write The Girl with the Red Rubber Boots? Um, the book is based on the 
true life of my daughter as she grew up. Uh, she, my second child, she was rather quirky and difficult since birth. It was like a puzzle or mystery to me. I wanted to write this so other parents of young kids with issues could relate and also see that the child is not being bad or acting out for attention. She's just different. Um, the child is also very talented and witty, so there's good sides and a uh, difficult side. How can folks learn more about you? Through public media, advertising, and word of mouth from others who love the book. Thanks, Jennifer. I wish that I had some red rubber boots. Let's check in now with some of our local kids to find out what they're reading at the library. Hello, my name is Audrey. I am seven. <coughs> This is a book about, this is a Black Lagoon book about a school nurse. It's about a guy who's getting a new, a new school nurse in the school, and he's like, he's scared of all the, some things that will happen, that might happen. Her name is Miss Hurst, the nurse, and she's supposed to be a real girl. My mommy brings me to the library, and I like to play the game on the computer. <laughs> Thanks, Aubrey. The School Nurse from the Black Lagoon is a great read, and I'm glad you're enjoying it. Stay right there. You're watching The Library Roadshow. Do you wonder how your family landed here? Do you really know your family roots? Discover more about your family history at the East Baton Rouge Parish Library Genealogy Department. East Baton Rouge Parish Library. Become a member and discover more. Marie, you have prediabetes. Prediabetes? I don't have time to eat, write, or exercise. I'm a busy mom. Oh, you're a busy mom. Yeah. This is great news. Busy moms never get prediabetes. Wait, what? Let me just... Yeah, this is all the people at risk for prediabetes, and way over here, busy moms. I guess sometimes things just happen. Devastating things. Your whole world changes in an instant. That's what happened to me the day my mother had a stroke. I'm Paul George, and I want you to spot a stroke fast. F, face drooping. A, arm weakness. S, speech difficulty. T, time to call 911. Protect the ones you love. Spot a stroke fast. The mission of the East Baton Rouge Parish Library's Baton Rouge Room Archives is to collect, manage, and preserve items that reflect the social, cultural, and political history of our area. We believe our preservation mission extends beyond the library's walls and into the collections of Baton Rouge's citizens and organizations. The Society of American Archivists has declared May Preservation Month. This is a time for everyone to take a moment to assess the physical health of their personal archives, prepare disaster plans, and learn about disaster prevention and recovery in the home. The Gulf Coast is an area vulnerable to disaster, and we encourage everyone to take time now to protect irreplaceable memories and records. As we like to say, an ounce of preservation is worth a pound of cure. The Baton Rouge Room Archives will be hosting workshops in May that focus on preservation in the home. We will discuss preservation strategies not only for paper and analog materials, but born digital content as well. We will also have a wonderful display in the Special Collections Department that highlights the many different methods, materials, and results of archival preservation. We have many preservation resources available to the public year-round, including monthly scan days. You can find the schedule for upcoming scan days, as well as the workshops in the Baton Rouge Room, located on the info guide at the library's website at www.ebrpl.com. Of course, our team of archivists is always happy to help with any preservation needs or questions you may have. All you have to do is come by the Special Collections Department at the Main Library on Goodwood or call us at 225-231-3752. You're watching the May edition of the Library Roadshow, a production of your East Baton Rouge Parish Library System. Preservation Month allows us to highlight the wonderful resources and growing services offered via the Baton Rouge Room, starting with our well-trained staff. They're genuinely interested in preserving and connecting us all with our history.
It's all available at the main library at Goodwood, and it's all free with your East Baton Rouge Parish Library card. Summer is right around the corner, and we are sure to have some blockbusters straight from the pages of a fabulous book. Let me tell you about a great sci-fi read. At once wildly original and stuffed with irresistible nostalgia, Ready Player One is a spectacularly genre-busting, ambitious, and charming debut. Part quest novel, part love story, and part virtual space opera set in the universe will spell slinging images, battle giant Japanese robots, Entire planets are inspired by Blade Runner and flying DeLoreans achieve light speed. That's right, it's the year 2045 and the real world is an ugly place. Like most of humanity, Wade Watts escapes his grim surroundings by spending his waking hours jacked into the oasis, a sprawling virtual utopia that lets you be anything you want to be. A place where you can live and play and fall in love on any of 10,000 planets. And like most of humanity, Wade dreams of being the one to discover the ultimate lottery ticket that lies concealed within this virtual world. From somewhere inside this giant network playground, Oasis creator James Holiday has hidden a series of fiendishly designed puzzles that will yield massive fortune and remarkable power to whoever can unlock them. For years, millions have struggled fruitlessly to attain this prize, knowing only that Halliday's riddles are based in the pop culture he loved, that of the late 20th century. And for more years, millions have found in this quest another means of escape, retreating into a happy, obsessive study of Halliday's icons. Like many of his contemporaries, Wade is as comfortable debating the finer points of John Hughes's Au Revoir, playing Pac-Man, or reciting devil lyrics that he is scrounging the power to run on his Oasis rig. And then Wade stumbles upon the first puzzle. Suddenly, the whole world is watching and thousands of competitors join the hunt. Among them, certain powerful players who are willing to commit very real murder to beat Wade to this prize. And that's how the page turns. Thanks, Tamika. I'm reading science fiction this month, too. I've been working my way through print copies of Harry Harrison's futuristic comic capers featuring slippery Jim DeGrees, also known as the Stainless Steel Rat. Plus, I've got The Shape of Water ready to go on my tablet. Then the Mystery Book Club is reading Murder on the Beach this month. Lots to choose from. And now for today's contest, visit the library's Facebook page at facebook.com slash ebrpl. What books do you want to take with you to the beach? They don't have to be good for you at all. That's facebook.com slash ebrpl. And while you're there, enjoy. We're not your grandfather's library anymore. What's coming up on the Library Road Show in June? Summer reading, of course. Tune in next month and I'll take you to one of our amazing branches for our summer reading performance. And coming up next month, I'll share another digital resource with you. And you can catch me on the bookmobile juggling all those required summer reading books. Thanks so much for joining us on the Library Road Show. And remember, your East Baton Rouge Parish Library is open seven days a week at each and every one of 14 branches, plus 24-7 on the web. Check us out at ebrpl.com. And that's how it goes.